to let me know when you're ready, Mayor. No, please. go ahead. Go oh, ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, Mayor, as you suggested, we'll go through the elements of the comprehensive plan, starting at the back and working our way forward, going from the easiest, so to speak, elements mm -hmm. to the more difficult or challenging one, the last one, or element number one being future land use. So we are looking at element number 12. This is a new element. It's for climate change. I had not planned on going by every single goal, <laughs> objective, and policy, but just basically to summarize um, that we've added a new goal, an overarching goal, to achieve a sustainable climate resilient community by promoting energy yeah, efficiency, greenhouse gas reduction, protecting and adapting public and private development, services, natural systems, and resources from climate change impacts, and continuing to coordinate and communicate locally and regionally to monitor and address changing needs and conditions <coughs> of the community. Obviously, this is very important to the city given its geographic location and given what is going on with climate change, um, a sea level rise and inundation. So following that goal that I just read to you, we have a number of objectives and policies that deal with greenhouse gas emissions, mitigation, protection, and adaptation with the transportation system, mitigation, protection, adaptation with the built environment, uh, and mitigation, protection, adaptation with the natural uh, water system as as well as water resources and services. Uh, it provides for interagency coordination with other agencies um, in Miami-Dade County and throughout the state and regional agencies. It provides for objectives and policies for emergency preparedness and disaster management and also addresses some social considerations, public health, education, green jobs and energy, um, and economic resiliency, resource management, dealing with waste, materials, economy, and local food. Um, equity and in inclusive decision making, green infrastructure, pedestrian access, and public education, community engagement, and research partnerships with regard to climate change. That's a brief summary of this elements, um, element number 12. Uh. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, do you want to open public hearing on each of the items? I don't know, it's, uh, we're just going to have to leave this open because we just had a public hearing on Chat K. I don't know what that meant, if it, m if it meant public hearing over all the 12, you know, sections, the one, the one w that we just went through, Mr. Attorney. Uh, if you're going to be voting on these individually, then um, I believe you need to offer the, uh, the, the public uh, an opportunity to speak on each one of these okay. items. We okay, public hearing is open. Yes, yes, please, and more. Thank you. Thank you. Public hearing is still open on the item. Climate change. Now, hmm? go ahead, go I was going to make a mo if public hearing is closed, I'll make a motion. Um, before you do that, if I may, do I have any comments from the City Council for changes we need to incorporate? I, have a, I have a slight comment. On page 12-3. Yes, sir. And on the very bottom, on policy 12.3.1. Since the city of North Miami shall, by 2020, encourage greener, more efficient, and climate resilient uh, const construction practices locally by item A, say building all new constructions of city-owned facilities to leadership in energy and environmental design standards in accordance with Article 5, Division 8, Section 5-805J of the LDRs. A can we make that, or it, would that be, would that violate uh, other people's right to make it uh, mandatory for any developers that are coming in, with not, not just city on facilities? Um, I don't think it would, but I'm going to seek legal advice on that. Mm. If I don't know if it would impose a hardship or affect a property right. Mm. The, um, the code that it's referring to, already makes that a requirement for all new construction. So that this all also applies to private construction. Yes, to, to private, okay. Yes, sir. Okay. That's, that's the only comment that I had on this section. I make a motion that we approve uh, the sustainable climate policy item 12. And I second. second. Mr. Clerk. Motion was made by Councilman Galvin to approve subsection 12 titled climate change, um, uh, climate change element. It was seconded by Councilwoman Keys. 
Councilman Bienname? Yes. Councilman Desume? Yes. Mayor Joseph? Yes. Councilman Galvin? Yes. Vice Mayor Keys? Yes. Yes. Item passes 5 0. Okay, the next element of the comprehensive plan is element number 11. It is the capital improvement element. This is a required element. You will note in reviewing it that we've made very few changes to it, uh, mostly just some uh, language cleanup. Um, on page 11 1 under debt management, the, we're required to have some monitoring and evaluation. Uh, we just added some language there that we will implement, monitor, and evaluate a debt management program and we updated the date, it was 2009. Now we're gonna set goals for scheduling parameters for debt management by January 2017. Okay. And then back on page 11-6, under potable water projects, we've added two policies there. One is that the city shall incorporate capital improvements affecting city's level of service by referencing the capital improvement schedules of Miami-Dade County. That's just to make it consistent uh, with Miami-Dade County, and the second one we added 11.4.7 is that every effort shall be made to use funds for the expansion, enhancement, and upgrade of the water s supply facilities in accordance with the city's adopted 16-year water supply facilities work plan update. And other than that, all other provisions of this element remain the same as the 2007 plan. Well, the public hearing is now open on this item. which is capital Im improvement element. Public hearing is closed. Move approval of uh, element 11. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Galvin to approve policy number um, 11, which is titled capital, capital improvement element. Motion was made by Councilman Galvin. It was seconded by Councilman Desume. Vice Mayor Keys. Yes. yes. Councilman Bienname? Yes. Hmm? Councilman Desume? Yes. Mayor Joseph? Yes. And Councilman Gowan? Yes. Item passes 5-0. All right, the next element we're going to consider is the economic element. This is considered an optional element of the plan, but it is not new. It has already been in your plan. We added um, the main goal of this has not changed, and the goal for the benefit of the audience is it says that the city of North Miami shall strive to create an economic environment that will enhance the economic prosperity of local businesses and attract new business while improving the quality of life for all of its citizens. It's a very broad and far-reaching goal. We've added any number of objectives, as you can see there, um, shown, uh, underlined. Uh, in furtherance of that goal, um, objective 9.1 is by December 2016, the city shall develop an economic development action plan that will be periodically updated to attract new businesses and retain existing businesses. Number of bullet points under that. We were thinking uh, this would go in tandem with the city's desire to see new development and redevelopment. Um, we have under there too, objective 9.2. It talks about marketing North Miami. Uh, it goes on in this element to talk about retain and expand existing businesses to recruit new businesses and industries and to integrate all of this with the future land use element and ensure necessary infrastructure is available to facilitate economic development. And then we added in there also some new language for workforce training um, and then talk on page 9-9 um, regarding redevelopment and revitalization, which we know the city is eager to see. And that is the economic element. Mr. Mayor, one question. Go ahead. How come we went from uh, element nine, goal nine, to 11? How, what happened to 10? 10 is the public schools facility public element. School. It's not required to be a part of the comprehensive plan. It can be a standalone element. That element was written after this comprehensive plan, meaning the 2007 plan, uh, was prepared. And the reason why is the requirement for it didn't come into play until after 2007. So nothing in it has changed whatsoever, and it's a standalone. Public hearing is open. No, public hearing was over. No, it's, uh, no? It, you opened it. 
Did you close it? Yeah, it was closed. <laughs> it was Some approved. Was approved. <laughs> Second. <laughs> 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 okay. Yes, I did, yeah. and, and Councilman Galvin second. Okay. Councilman um, Desume makes a motion to approve number nine, policy number nine, titled Economic Element. Motion was seconded by Councilman Galvin. Councilman Galvin, how do you vote? Yes. Vice Mayor Keys? Yes. Councilman Bienname? Yes. Councilman Desume? Yes. And Mayor Joseph? Yes. Item passes 5-0. The next element to be considered is element number eight, the intergovernmental coordination <coughs> element. This is also a required element as provided in Florida statutes of a comprehensive plan. We have not made really any substantial changes to that other than to update um, excuse me, some of the policies to be consistent with uh, requirements or um, actions being taken in Miami-Dade <laughs> County. Uh, the overall arching goal of this element is to take necessary actions to establish and maintain intergovernmental relationships designed to improve communication and coordination with public and private entities involved in development activities, resource conservation, transportation, infrastructure, and growth management was the intent of the Florida legislature in requiring this element that government entities work together for the common good. So um, you will notice on page 8-5 uh, we have updated policy 8.4.2 just basically says the city shall participate in any update to the regional water supply plan in conjunction with the South Florida Water Management District. That was a requirement. And mm. on the following page, policy 8.4.9, that the city shall seek mutual aid agreements with all neighboring cities, Miami, uh, Dade County, and State Federal, and other local agencies to ensure the level of service is consistent and to allow for agencies to make, there's a typographical error right there, to, um, to make requests for personnel and uh, other equipment to assist in operational goals. And then we added two new policies at the end of the section on page 8.8 .8, um, to be consistent with it. The City of North Miami Public Works Department, Water and Sewer Utilities shall continue to hold annual workshops with other government jurisdictions uh, within the North Miami Water Service area. And the policy after that is, <coughs> excuse me, that appropriate mechanisms will be developed and adopted with the villages of Miami Shores and Biscayne Park. Um, the South Florida Water Management District in Miami-Dade County to assure that adequate water supplies are available to all water users. Obviously, this issue addresses water supply and water supply planning. Oh, public hearing is open. Public hearing is closed. Move approval. Second. Motion to approve policy number eight, titled Intergovernmental Coordination Element, was made by Councilman Galvin. It was seconded by Councilman Desume. Mayor Joseph, how do you vote? Yes. Councilman Galvin? Yes. Vice Mayor Keyes? Yes. Councilman Bienname? Yes. Councilman Desume? Yes. Item passes 5-0. Okay, the next element is uh, element number seven, parks and recreation element, yet another required element under Florida statutes. The overarching goal of this element is to provide a high quality and diverse system of public parks and recreation sites that meet the needs of existing and future residents and businesses of the city of North Miami. Um, it, this element remains largely unchanged. You can see under monitoring evaluation of objective 7.1, we've added uh, in a monitoring uh, requirement to evaluate expanded recreation opportunities and programs for people that are disabled. We thought that most appropriate. Um, on page 7-2, uh, we've revised uh, 7.4.5 that the city should coordinate with Miami-Dade County to incorporate the County Blue Way Plan, that's an existing plan, into existing and future park development to encourage waterfront access and to address the creation of a gateway park along Biscayne Canal for recreation. 7.6 is that the, and this is new, the city and the CRA shall examine sites for athletic venues, particularly Olympic training facilities, Kay. or an urban recreation complex that includes a large gymnasium, indoor basketball and racquetball courts, swimming pools, exercise and weight training rooms, conference rooms and locker rooms. Um, as a part of the community redevelopment component of the central business district, or central business commercial district. And those were the substantial changes uh, to that, I just add in 7.8.3 on page 7-5. Um, we have amended 
this policy to say that the city shall enhance historic preservation efforts that solidifies the city's past and leaves a legacy for future generations. Mr. Mayor, through you to the uh, advisor. Uh, did you say you're leaving in the Olympic Training Center language or you're removing the Olympic no, Training Center? No, that's new language. And that was a oh, that wasn't that wasn't there in two thousand and seven? Yeah. That that was when we were considering the Oh uh, yes it was. I'm sorry it was. It was okay. stricken. It was it was stricken but it added back in later. It was okay. reworded in other it words. Either okay. way it's fine with me. I just talk about some yeah. historical preservation, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. May I ask a question, Mr. Mayor? Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to bring up this Olympic training facility. I don't know why it should be in there because I think that's off the table. I see no, I mean, I don't know why it's in there. Um, my other question on parks is I feel our city is really lacking in parks, and we are looking for some very high-density towers. Uh, our NRO is looking for 100% coverage of lots. What are we doing about parks? Where are the children going to be playing? that are going to be living up in the sky. If your buildings are 100% of the property, you, you've got this little yellow sheet. They, they're talking about 50% of the land is going to be parks. We don't have enough parks, so why haven't we addressed, um, I mean, our, our future land use mar map, no parks. We're really lacking in parks. So we're putting all these people in, and the kids have no place to play. Okay. Um, just for a um, historical perspective, if you will, the way the Florida statutes are set out, for comprehensive planning purposes, and I hear your concern, is that it establishes what we call a level of service, and that is you have to have so many <coughs> acres of parks or open space per thousand people of population. There's a, a formula that you do. Because of some of the open spaces that you have in the northeast portion of the city, um, you actually t technically meet the requirements. You're talking Alita Park. Yes. Which is not really in our city. I mean, it, it is. It's yes, it is. Dollars. Legally, it's ours, but it's not anywhere near anybody in our city. So. No, I understand, right. and like I said, I, I recognize your concern. From a statutory standpoint, you meet that level of service. If there is um, a desire on behalf of the council to give direction to the appropriate person to, to do more of a parks or a park inventory or a park study, that, we, we, that we could certainly be a, a policy we could add in here. That was a complaint of mine seven years ago because they included Alita Park, which is a beautiful park, but I wonder how many of the people can actually get there and use it on a regular basis. Maybe, I mean, it, it, it's just not fair to be using that to uh, count our level of service of parks for the actual residents here. That's a point of order. It's now set at 2.75 acres per thousand residents. Oh. So that's the current formula. And Nixon Labrun just pointed out to me that in this um, element under Objective 7.4 on page 7-2, the Objective 7.4 says that the city will use the Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Master, master Plan, plan right. as a guide in determining priorities for the development of new parks, improve existing parks, and methods to increase park, increase park accessibility. And he's just informed me that there is a parks master plan. That, that's true. Yeah. Uh, just hope to our planners, technicians, that we're working on getting more parks as part of this whole development. Um, can I say something, Mr. Amir, about uh, I'm happy that uh, Vice Mayor Pease bring the issue of parks uh, because uh, only in my district, District 3, we have more than 20 acres of land right. that can be used for parks. We have Wax Park, and we have uh, Cagni, Cagni. Cagni North. Right. And uh, we also have that uh, about six acres of uh, empty lot on 135th between Memorial Highway and Third Court. I understand it's <coughs> private property, but uh, yeah. and uh, I think those are you have six ideas that I the I city can yeah, about 6.2. Six, six pocket parks, little right. parks yeah. within the residential neighborhood. Yeah, that's when we need to have, uh, if we have uh, a park plan put in together, we need to include like uh, those area in my district. It's over 20 acres of uh, open space. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I, I just bringing it up because we're really s lacking parks in our city. Did we have public hearings yet? No. Public hearing is now open on parks and recreation elements. 
Mr. Mayor, Council Members, uh, real quick, uh, Kevin Burns, 2065 Al Alamander Drive. At our last comprehensive plan, we developed a park impact fee. That new development would pay into a park impact fee. That policy was suspended. <coughs> it is on the books, but it was suspended because they thought it was a burden. It is something to go back and look at if you're going to have this redevelopment. We also had a library impact <coughs> fee for new, new development that you could contribute money <coughs> and impact fee to the library system. Um, again, that was to help offset and meet the goals of the uh, um, uh, park needs that were coming to the, that were needed in the city and let the new developers pay for it. Okay. Okay. And just to clarify, if that's something that is the desire of this council, that would be uh, placed in the land development regulations. And that's a process separate from this process. Separate. Yes, absolutely. Robin Latier Tisdall, 2108 Northeast 124th, also called Laurel Lane, North Miami 33181. Um, so I have often heard our mayor discuss how he thinks that our city should definitely be one that we bring in more tourism dollars and make it an amicable place. And having some personal experience with some other city councils, i.e., my mother's a my mother-in-law's mayor, and my father's a Democratic committeeman. So. Um, I can tell you that I have a small, small one. He's 18 months, a toddler, and I have to leave the city of North Miami to go to wonderful parks, unfortunately. And I think that that's sad. It makes me very, very sad. And I thank you, uh, Councilman, Councilwoman Keys, for bringing that up, that our city needs better parks and we need to do a better job. And I'd be willing to do a whole lot more to have them here, right here in our little city. I would drive anywhere within the confines of North Miami for a park. Just saying that to make sure that also people understand that I'm pro development. Love you all. Thank you. <laughs> Judy Brown, 1100 Northwest 120 Terrace. Well, over in District 4, we have 9.5 acres of green space, and we have been trying to get it developed uh, as a park. So, along with Councilman Benjamin. We do have land that's for parks. It's just the money to get those parks developed. So within this um, frame of getting this money in here, we do that. The other thing that I would like for to be put in there, um, and I applaud you for bringing in and saying that we need more activity for the disabled, but also we need to try to focus on our elderly. We uh, somehow in all of this spirited debate and everything that goes on, we forget that we here in North Miami, we have a population of elderly people that somehow gets left out of the equator, out of this equation. So uh, I, would, I would adhere you to try to include them within this plan so they would have more activities. Thank you. Hi, I'm Laura Hill, 13075 Griffin Boulevard. I just want to add my, my input as both the president of No Me Neighbors um, and as a mother to two small children. Uh, no Me Neighbors has always made it a priority to, to since we've been together, um, to emphasize how much we appreciate our open spaces and how much we want to maintain those open spaces and continue to encourage the city to bring us things we can do um, out with our families. Parks are really important. I think it's also important that we improve on the quality of parks that we already have. There's a tot lot on 125th right before, uh, right, right before the bridge coming over. And it's in bad shape. It wouldn't take a whole lot to improve that and give that as an asset to the community, to the people who live there. Right now, it's uh, there's just not a lot there for children to play in. It's not very attractive. We can do a lot better. So I just want to make sure that um, I put that, that we really support improving our parks and creating more parks. Craig Lederman, 12530 Northeast 4th Avenue. 33161. Um, I just wanted to point out, because I think that we lost Howard, and we all know that Howard would wanna want us to say this, is I would like to see us work towards making these green areas and these parks with sustainable landscaping, with native plants that can deal with you know drought periods, high heat periods, use less water consumption, 
and um, that's one of the things that I've been seeing now that uh, we ha we've had discussions with is that there's a city plan, but within the city plan there's loopholes. So it says that you're not supposed to use invasive species at the beginning, but then when it comes to plant choices, there's invasive species in the plant choices. Mm -hmm. So what I would like to see is a proactive use of the members of this council to make sure that we're not using loopholes to bring in real native plants. Thank you. William Prevatel, 11950 North Bay Shore Drive. Uh, for many years, we've known that we're short on our allocation of parks. We've known this, and uh, regularly we've called for increasing our parks. Uh, unfortunately, it never really happens. We never really plan it out. However, uh, there are a couple opportunities that are right before us, and I'd like to follow up on a suggestion that the Winston Water Plant, which had the diamond shape, which was, there were five other locations, four other locations of these diamonds that are park space for the Sasso Pool, that now that we are relocating the tanks, we can relocate the administration building also and retrieve that park. We can salvage that park rather than just getting more um, utility space and building it out and making that, uh, that neighborhood you know, <coughs> further compromised. We can revive that neighborhood by just relocating the administration building. Simple as that. I'd like to also see us increase the park, the green space along the canal uh, particularly a little bit north and mostly south of 125th Street. And I'd like to see also, as you've seen, uh, in any new development, particularly bonus type new development, that there be a trade-off, that there be some sort of contribution to the community so that if you do uh, get an allowance to go high, that you'll also have a con contribution to the community that will be a park, such as 50% of the footprint. So therefore it encourages buildings to go up, leave a lot of open space below, view corridors and such and we'll be able to increase our parks through the, uh, the private enterprise system. Uh, and that would be that they would create a park somewhere within, let's say, either adjacent to their new building or possibly within 500 feet of their new building, somewhere in that range, it would contribute back to that neighborhood. And that could be done on a regular basis throughout the city wherever this, is, this bonus incentive uh, takes place, is acted on. Thank you for your consideration. Hello, John Porter, 340 Northeast 131st Street. Um, the only point that I would like to add to this is that we only have one dog park. So as, as much as we absolutely need parks for children to play, we also need a great place for us to bring our pets and to bring community. So when we're thinking about this, I think that it would be great to have something that is more centered to the city where our pets can come and play as well. Not everybody has children. Sometimes their babies are fur babies and they should be respected too. Peggy Boulay, 300 Northwest 125th Street. I do agree with everyone here. We do need more parks. We do need more green space. I, too, have a little one who, even with all of his allergies, he loves being outside. So um, I would like us all to also take that in consideration for those nature lovers who can't really handle nature but still love nature. You know, I would like it to be a, a um, very community-friendly park with indoor and outdoor um, green light uh, things for kids as well as little furry ones to do as well. So thank you and thank you for making that suggestion. Hi, Jennifer Lee, 1500 Northwest 132nd My name is Vanel Patigny. I live on uh, 925 Northwest 132nd Street, District 4. Um, I would like to urge you guys just in this whole planning of new parks, you improve the parks that we already have. Because I live in District 4, and you guys treat it like a broom closet in your home. And I think for us overall, I think we are a chain. North Miami is a chain. And right now, we're only as strong as the weakest link. And right now, District 4 is a weak link. And until you guys want to make this a great city to build these high rises, we need to fix our foundation. You cannot build high rises on a weak foundation. Let's start fixing up, repairing District 4, District 3, and moving on up. Before we put in new parks, let's leave money aside to fix the parks we already have. I'm going to be here once again talking about the broader picture, but I want you guys to consider that. Thank you. Yeah. 
public hearing is not closed. Any, any comments from the dais? I make a motion to approve. Second. Motions made by Councilman Desmond to approve policy number seven, titled Parks and Recreation Element. Sec that motion was seconded by Councilman Galvin. Councilman Desmond, how do you vote? Yes. Mayor Joseph? Yes. Councilman Galvin? Yes. Vice Mayor Keyes? Yes. And Councilman Biedemann? Yes. Item passes 5 0. Six. Number six? Yes, the next element of the comprehensive plan is element number six, a required element dealing with conservation. <laughs> its overarching goal, its first overarching goal, is to implement programs and activities to protect and conserve the city's air quality. And to that regard, there are a number of objectives dealing with fuel efficient municipal fleet, uh, air quality through regulations and intergovernmental coordination. Uh, the second goal is to implement programs and activities to protect and conserve the quality of the city's water and land resources. There are objectives and policies relating to that for maintaining water quality and protecting wetlands uh, through required permitting to preserve water quality and wetlands through intergovernmental coordination uh, to protect well fields uh, and uh, also water conservation. Uh, we've added some things there for water conservation under monitoring and evaluation on page 6-4. And then to go to something that one of the speakers said uh, when we were discussing the last element in the public hearing. Policy 6B.4.2 is <coughs> to continue to maintain consistency with the South Florida Regional Planning Council re regarding the Strategic Regional Policy Plan, Policy 7.4, as may be amended and strengthen the following water conservation measures. The city has adopted the following measures and it lists some 12 of them there. Um, in <coughs> yeah, uh, including selecting landscape materials from the city's Xeriscape Florida Friendly Plant List, uh, utilizing native plantings, uh, implementing water conservation, uh, public education programs, and so on. And then goal 6C of this element is to protect and conserve the tree canopy and native vegetation in the city from abuse and destruction. There are objectives and policies with regard to the tree canopy. The street tree management, we've added in some 17 policies with regard to street trees and street tree management. Excuse me, <coughs> some, not 17, but some 29 policies dealing with street tree and street tree management. Um, and then goal 6D of this element is to implement programs and activities to protect and conserve the city's wildlife <coughs> and marine habitat. We have objectives and policies dealing with protecting natural resources, a uh, number of policies related to that. And then the city shall coordinate with the Department of Environmental Regulation and adhere to conservation policies in the South Florida Regional Planning Council's strategic policy plan and some other goals and <coughs> objectives that are included in there, but the largely the remainder of the text remains unchanged other than updating some dates. Public hearing is open. John Porter, 340 Northeast 131st Street. Um, there's <coughs> language in here that is very easy to pass over and it's a very simple word and it says two words actually shall consider which means you could if you want to i think that if you're really serious about <coughs> this and this really means something to you and it shouldn't be shall consider like maybe we'll consider it if we feel like it if you're really serious about it then put some meat into it and say that you will do it not that you will consider maybe doing it which, par which paragraph is that? that which paragraph, sir? Sir? Which, uh, I'm not sure which paragraph which it was. Yeah. I guess it's not. Yeah. Yeah, but what is the idea? Yeah. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Right here. So which one are you Where looking for? The, uh, the beginning. So here's the beginning of it. Well, <coughs> Well, there is one uh, six. Well, yeah, six C point two point nineteen. Six no, it's nine. The shall. The shall is good, but you're saying shall consider. Shall yeah. consider like <coughs> together. Shall is huh? Shall is mandatory. It's yes, not mandatory. May. Yeah. So shall is you're required to. <laughs> yes. Just strike out consider. 
Yeah, yeah. It's it's really, you know, there's exactly where it is. There's this is the I think it was I think it was tree Shall and curry oh my um, God, and the cars fuel efficiency of the cars. Okay. <coughs> Shall and curry. Shall is good. Shall promote. <coughs> so I guess it's kind of an overreaching throughout this section. There are a lot of those moments that happen in here that I think could just be firmed up through an actual commitment to do that. So fifteen point one point five. It's sprinkled throughout. Okay. Public hearing is still open. Public hearing is now closed. On section C. No, six. Any comments from the dais? What did we decide to do with the shall? shall consider? Shall is definitely staying. Yeah. Okay. I think the issue is consider because you can okay. cons you shall consider it, but then you could toss it away. I think. Mm -hmm. we but we don't so want we don't want to be in violation of that's our company. That's what I was going to say. We can't do it. Well, that's why we yeah. need a little bit of okay. wiggle room for wiggle lack of a room, better. Just in case. And yeah. these are always things when we have objectives and policies. <coughs> you know, you can implement these through your land development regulations. That's true. There's already a chapter twenty that's completely devoted to trees and ma maintenance of the yeah. the canopy so okay i'm is, is public hearing yeah. Yeah. No, it's over it's the go ahead now we have a uh, motion to approve the motion second to yeah. councilwoman vice mayor keys makes a motion to approve policy number six title conservation element it was seconded by councilman desume let me fix this. Okay. Councilman Bienname, how do you vote? Yes. Councilman so Desume, how do you vote? Yes. Mayor Joseph? Yes. Councilman Galvin? Yes. And Vice Mayor Keys? Yes. Item passes 5 0. The next element of the comprehensive plan is the coastal management element. It is a required element for state statute. The number one goal of the, co the coastal management element is to protect human life and property in the coastal areas of North Miami. It has objectives and policies that address flood prevention, flood protection, excuse me, hazard mitigation. Uh, we updated policy 5A.2.5 to make it more current um, in the information it contains there. This element is, um, it talks about post-disaster redevelopment, public access to the shoreline, and provide for water dependent uses. Most of these objectives and policies are really largely unchanged <coughs> from the 2007 plan. Um, and then we get into coastal planning area um, and hurricane vulnerability zoning improvements, vulnerability zone improvements, excuse me. And then uh, we added a section under 5-9, on, on page 5-9, for adaptation uh, action areas. Uh, the first objective there is the city shall designate areas for optional adaptation planning <coughs> for coastal hazards and the potential impact of sea level rise for prioritizing funding for infrastructure and adapt adaptation planning is defined in accordance with the Community Planning Act, which is in state statute. And we've added a few other um, policies uh, in regards to the coastal management. Um, the, that the city shall consider policies within the coastal management element that improves resilience to coastal flooding that the city sustainable administrator shall monitor the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity Community Resiliency Planning for Sea Level Rise, that the city sustainable administrator shall monitor uh, planning guidance, modeling and vulnerability analysis methodologies and effective modes for communicating sea level rise risks, and policy 5D.3.4, that the city sustainable okay. administrator shall coordinate with the Southeast Florida Regional Compact for needed support in data and analysis regarding sea level rise vulnerability. Uh, that completes my brief presentation. All right. Public hearing is now open on section five. Yes, William Prevatel, 11950 North Bay Shore Drive. Uh, this is a component that's been discussed for years uh, in the uh, Planning Commission in the form of exempting structured parking. Um, what we're talking about is having the city flood whether it's from waves coming in from the bay or just rainfall, 
but there is a flooding situation. There is a rising sea level. It's a great concern. What better than to start to raise up our building stock, uh, any of the new building stock? Uh, currently, and because of height restrictions, much of the many of the buildings go down to the grade and therefore uh, are very vulnerable. And if there is a great flood, there would be a great deal of, of burden to the city to restore these apartments and these other facilities and to relocate these people. And it's just preemptive. There are so many benefits to lifting up, to lifting up the building, not exempting that parking, so that parking can go below. It creates open space, which will provide drainage for this flooding. It will create ventilation, which helps to dry this. It will save the interior of the structures. Additionally, you'll increase value because it'll be safer for the occupants. They'll have better views. They won't be looking out onto a parking lot. We get the green space, less, let's say, bugs for the occupants, more security for the occupants. It, there are so many winning elements to exempting structured parking that it, it's, it's practically a no-brainer, and I think it should really be part of this. Uh, rather than us having a building and having the other half of the lot, one half of the, the lot building and the other half parking lot, and just paving and building all the way from lot to lot, let's lift up the building, put the parking lot underneath. Let's get that open space. Let's, you know, make an investment in our future and make it a little bit safer. <coughs> Thank you. That's something that certainly be appropriately addressed in the land development regulations. Okay, public hearing is closed. Move approval of uh, tab fi five. Five. Policy five. Second. <laughs> Councilman Galvin <coughs> moves to approve policy number five titled Coastal Management Element. It was seconded by Councilman Desume. Vice Mayor, how do you vote? Vice Mayor Keys? Yes. yes. Councilman Bienname? Yes. Councilman Desume? Yes. Mayor Joseph? Yes. And Councilman Galvin? Yes. Item passes 5 0. The next element of the comprehensive plan is element number four, the infrastructure element. Um, with regard to sanitary sewer, the overarching goal is to provide an adequate sewage collection system for service area customers and maintain an agreement with Miami-Dade County to dispose of all sewage collected. Goes on to talk about sewage collection, ad additional sewage uh, collection capacity. You will note on page 4-2, there is a chart called sewage flow allocations, and those have just been updated consistent with uh, the, my the information available from Miami-Dade County. And the same with the chart on the ensuing page on page 4.3. Uh, there are a number of goals and objectives with regard to solid waste, business solid waste collection, resource recovery, city recovery, solid waste disposal. None of that has been changed. Natural groundwater aquifer recharge areas, none of that has been substantially changed. There's a goal regarding potable water to make sure there's an adequate supply of water to, s to the service area customers. Talks about um, water quality standards. And then you will note beginning on page 4.7, there are policies and um, new objectives added or modified under the uh, water provision objective 4D.2, 4D.2.A, um, and those, and then on the ensuing pages also, you see we've added a number of policy, all to be consistent with the city's water <coughs> supply plan. The water Kay. supply plan being a required element, so we're just making internal consistencies. Could you just sort of this for this one? Public hearing is open. Public hearing is closed. Move approval of item four. Second. <coughs> Councilman Galvin moves to approve item number four, policy number four, titled infrastructure element. Motion was seconded by Councilman Desume. Councilman Galvin, how do you vote? Yes. Vice Mayor Keyes. Yes. Councilman Bienname. Councilman Desume. Yes. And Mayor Joseph. Yes. Item passes 5-0. The third element of the comprehensive plan is the required housing element. Its uh, main goal is to ensure that the housing in the city is decent, safe, and sanitary to serve the needs of the city's present and future residents. You can see we've made some changes in terms of updating this element to make the dates <coughs> current, uh, doing some rewording <coughs> of the plan, for example, changing code enforcement to code compliance. Um, some of the monitoring and evaluation has been updated. 
and some um, other minor things on page 3-4 under monitoring and evaluation. There is one item that has been added, which is consider historic preservation zoning districts for areas with high concentrations of historical housing. Uh, ensure design guidelines will, with continued coordination with Miami-Dade County of Historic Preservation, and amend application, excuse me, applicable land development regulations to support the architectural significance. That is a new monitoring uh, element that has been uh, um, included. On policy page 3.6, we've added a policy 3.8.6.6 which says that the city shall evaluate housing opportunities within areas proximate to FIU, Johnson and Wales, and Barry University, and speak with stu student housing developers specializing um, in the specific real estate sector to see if there's some development or redevelopment uh, opportunities there. Uh, 3A.6.7 says that the city will evaluate, this is new, uh, will evaluate and pursue a reasonable accommodation ordinance for persons with disabilities to address housing barriers and retrofitting needs. And the rest is minor updates to it and uh, housekeeping matters. Okay, public hearing is open. Uh, Vanel Patigny, nine two five Northwest 132nd Street. Um, I heard her talk about. Um, opportunities for uh, students, FIU and Johnson and Wells. We need to talk about opportunities for low income. If you want to be a great city, the great city of New York, in Brooklyn, Manhattan, all over, they have development going on, but they have development also in minds of people with low income. You have high rises with millionaires and people making 30, 40,000 making a living wage. I think we need to add that somewhere. I'm not a politician. I don't know how all of this works, but I know what I hear when I don't hear, and I don't hear anybody talking about people with low income. Thank you. Public hearing is now closed. <coughs> Move approval of tab three on housing. Second. Councilman Galvin. Moves to approve policy number three, titled Housing Element. That motion was seconded by Mayor Joseph. Mayor Joseph, how do you vote? Yes. Councilman Galvin? Yes. Vice Mayor Keyes? Yes. Councilman Bienname? Yes. And Councilman Desume? Yes. Item passes 5 0. Can I, can I ask a quick question? In regards to his question, affordable housing would not be in this plan, if, if it's what he's referring to. The, the plan actually comes in two volumes. These are the goals, objectives, and policies. The other volume of a comprehensive plan is what we call the DIA, or the Data Inventory and Analysis. And one of the things that any city is required to do pursuant to Florida statute is to assess the housing stock, the availability, the, and the affordability and tenure, um, and to provide an analysis for that, and where a city is found to be sufficient to address that through goals, objectives, and policies. Okay, and Mr. Mayor, to follow up on the councilman's <coughs> point, if we might maybe ask Katya to get Mr. Uh, Patigny, I believe was his name, yes, get his contact information so we can forward him uh, some details on existing affordable housing programs and things that we're working on. Um, it, it would be great to be able to forward him that. <coughs> We number just, uh, number two. Oh, I'm sorry, wow, transportation element, element number two. <laughs> the transportation element's overarching goal is to provide for a safe, convenient, effective, and efficient motorized and non-motorized transportation system, which is intricately related to the size, character, and uh, land use pattern of North Miami and improves the level of, improves the level of the multimodal transportation system with an emphasis on public transportation systems uh, where feelable, uh, feasible for all of the city's residents and visitors. That's the overarching goal. The element then goes on to talk about roadway levels of service. Um, we've added in some monitoring and evaluation things in terms of looking at high accident frequency locations or evaluating improvements to those high accident locations there. Uh, there's a transportation concurrency exception area, which is something that's authorized under state law um, to address urbanizing areas. 
Um, we added them to adapt land use and transportation strategies to support and fund mobility, mobility meaning alternative modes of transportation, not just automobiles, because that's the trend now. We've heard people mention smart growth, and part of the smart growth movement, of course, and in conjunction <coughs> with the fact that you're getting a transit station downtown is to look at promoting alternative forms of transportation, not just vehicular, but uh, bicycle, pedestrian, and uh, what have you. So we've added in some things there. We've done some, a lot of housekeeping, as you can see on page 2-5, um, in terms of updating wording or rewording. On policy 2A.2.9, that's page 2-6, We've added in a policy or updated one that says by June 2016, the city shall commence a parking master plan that assesses parking needs, determines design standards for downtown parking <coughs> garages, creates an inventory of existing parking facilities, and provides recommendations for suggested locations, design standards that reflect the NOMI character and culture, and support mixed use goals and strategies of the city, and suggest locations shall be prioritized along the planned corridor development or the PCD overlay the Central Business Commercial District and the Transit Center Overlay District. This was added in there in view of the fact that not only is the transit station coming, but the city's looking at redevelopment and redevelopment opportunities and potential and a more urbanizing environment, but making sure that parking is appropriately addressed, but appropriately addressed in an urban form. Um, Mr. Mayor? Go ahead. Uh, Michelle, one question, one point to make on that. Yes. Everybody keeps saying the train station is coming, the train station is coming. As far as I'm, as, as much as I'm aware, there is no dedicated funding source from All Aboard Florida or any other entity for any type of rail station here in North Miami. Am I incorrect? <coughs> or is there, is there money set aside that I'm not aware of? Uh, council member, all of there's All Aboard Florida, which is a commuter service. Um, it will connect Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm. But there's another service that's um, the Tri-Rail Coastal Link, yeah. which is funded by the South Florida Regional Transportation Authority. And that there are dedicated funds for that, and it, they've already identified general location areas for future stations. And North Miami is definitely getting one. So um, can you tomorrow, and Katya, please give him <coughs> scott at scott-galvin.com. <laughs> I want to <laughs> see that smoking hot evidence that there really is a train station coming to North Miami. Not a problem. Because until then, I, just can, I, I think it's an urban legend that people are repeating over and over that, it, that we're accepting as true. And, and, and it, I, I mean, it's not, I mean, where is it going to be? On what, whose land? Nobody, I've talked to landowners in there. Nobody's approached them about buying their land. Are we going to yeah, eminent domain their land? Is the city going to have to kick in money for this? Or if I can't hear that. It's, it's a, it's a <laughs> issue for me. We'll get you the information. Yeah. Scott. And get it to, s get it to staff too, I'm because I I'm just sorry. talked to, to oh. Tanya yesterday or day before, and she said, yeah, there's no money. Am I wrong? There's no money set aside for a train station? I don't want to belabor yeah. the night. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Councilman, I believe it's the same track on 14th. Is that where they? 14th and 122. And, uh, and actually, the, um, the, the Tri-Rail Coastal Link, they actually did a presentation at the city council about eight months ago. Um, I could pull a copy of the, the presentation that was done. And it was identified. The land, they, they're not definite whether they're going to build it on the east of, of, the, um, of um, the railroad track or on the west side of the railroad track. But that general vicinity is already allocated for a train station or I a train stop. I look forward to being educated in the morning, I will which is only a couple of hours. From I'll, I'll get you a copy of the presentation. Yeah. And it's, no. it's a budget. Yeah. Yeah. As well as contact budget. names and phone numbers whom sure. I can call. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, one quick question, um, Michelle. In yes, under policy <coughs> 2.8, when you talk about the downtown and the major corridors, are, are these the major corridors you're referring to? I'm sorry, where are you? Uh, okay. okay, go ahead. Yeah, oh, go thank ahead. you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, may I have a question, please? Go ahead. Thank you. Um, two questions on traffic. One, um, I have a whole new set in blue that I can barely read, but <laughs> I don't know if it's in here or in the comp plan where it's suggested that we reduce the si size of our medians 
I don't know if it's in this one or in the comp plan. Um, I know it's in our master quarter plan, but the idea of reducing the widths of our medians, either we don't have them or like on Biscayne Boulevard, you have this little space where you can run across three, you know, three um, streets and stand in the median and like just be bless your lucky stars that you haven't gotten run over. So why are we, you know, throughout here I, there's a few references to reducing reduction of medians. Is that, is that in the comprehensive plan? Or is that in your transportation master plan? I don't know. I, I don't know if it's in here. It, I thought it might have been in both, but I'm just bringing it up. If, it's just if it's in the transportation master plan mm -hmm. that the city ap apparently adopted, we would have mirrored it in here. You did. You did. You mirrored, you mirrored right. what was in the major quarter plan, but I mean, reducing medians is crazy. Our, we have a, we, you know, this is our transportation, <coughs> but uh, we have a serious problem, and I'm going to bring this up again in the when we get to the comp plan. We have these little tiny sidewalks throughout our city, on Biscayne Boulevard. Th you can't ride a bicycle. You can't ride your bicycle. Nobody in their right mind is going to ride their bicycle on Biscayne or even 125th. It's suicide. So you try to get up on the sidewalks, and the sidewalks, besides being narrow, have bus benches, have poles, have garbage cans. You got to jump off because I do this. I try to write for the city, so you know I, I think we should have addressed that. And one last issue, okay. um, you've got policy two four a four five, and it's we're going to perform a traffic circulation study to evaluate downtown um, <coughs> circulation, particularly Northeast one twenty third and one twenty seventh Street, um, instead of going down one twenty fifth. I know a lot of people are not going to be happy with this pass-through going through their residential neighborhoods, number one. Number two, it says we are going to, we shall perform a study. We don't have a date on this. Uh, these studies are like $100,000. We don't have the money right now to do it, so. You have seven years. Where, I'm sorry, could you please tell me again where? 2A45, page 2-9. So we're go we shall perform this traffic study. Okay. Uh, when do we have to do it by? How much is it going to cost? The date's open-ended, and obviously within the purview, if you think it's inappropriate, you can be stricken. Well, I mean, it's just, you know, I don't want to get stuck having to, you know, spend. We, we do so many studies in this city. Which I one? Wh wh what city are you on? 2A4.5. Uh, Aline, are you, are you doing a study now? This one? Yeah. Yeah, that's from... Uh, yeah, it, it was looked at when in, in doing our downtown redevelopment to reroute the traffic on 127th. And I believe it was also looked at, at F when FDOT was doing a rerouting of the traffic to go on to West Dixie and Northeast 6th Avenue. So that, that has been looked at, you know, I would say in a partial format as well. As a point of order, uh, th this is the kind of item that will come before you for approval based on the new ordinance for chapter seven the procurement ordinance chapter so but these but this studies says we shall so we're right. going to have to approve it because we voted tonight to yeah, shall do it is, it, is this one of those things we shall consider? Right. You can shall <laughs> consider it for sure. This one too, <laughs> shall consider. Shall. Is that a change you would, is that a? Yes, yes. shall consider. Definitely. Consensus? Yes. Okay. Shall consider. Okay, so the city of North Miami shall consider performing. Uh -huh. Now, on page 2-5, a policy 2A.2.6, a number four, I'm glad that you actually uh, mentioned, you added the importance of us uh, coordinating with Miami-Dade County, the, uh, the as well as the state, and especially the NPO, uh, because of those big plans coming up especially the mid-range and long-range uh, plans, you know, with the NPO and the traffic solution, the uh, projects that, they are, that are coming down the pipeline. But one, o one other entity that I would like to see included is the MDX, because MDS ha X happens to pr function independently of the NPO board. As a matter of fact, last time I was in uh, the traffic solution uh, subcommittee meeting, one of the things that they were raving about is the fact that MDX was asking the chairman 
was well actually he, was, he wasn't asking he was telling the chairman that in the weeks to come he will come and present their plans to the MPO and uh, which which actually should not be the case so pretty much MDX has a lot of uh, long range projects that they are working on that M the MPO board doesn't even know about so we need to actually kind of reach out to them I don't know if we have to do it through the MPO and uh, I mean you are the experts and uh, as we all know, all the expressway that we have. As a matter of fact, uh, you are aware of the uh, connection, the east-west connection they're trying to make from Gratney. To the Gratney? Yeah, yeah. To, uh, on off, off of 119 uh, to, uh, to I-95. So is that, that is something that is, that is quite imminent, as a matter of fact. Yeah. It may not be in one, two, three, four years, but, right. but it is in the works. Yeah, that's uh, I, I yeah. believe the, the planning of that, that project uh, actually is an elevated roadway connecting Gratney. Yeah, to 95. 119 is actually going to be, yeah. you know, and, and this are, there's an option as well where the county and, and other agencies are looking at when you have elevated roadways, actually using the bottom as a linear park. Yeah. So there's options as well oh that we have to look at. You know, there's different options that the county and even FDOT <coughs> has in uh, their planning. Are those the only two streets, 119 and 135th, that, that are run by um, MDX? Well, one, one the two no, projects. The, the MDX are mainly the, the expressway. Right. No, I know. But yeah, one, the 119 um, mm. connection. Yeah, the, the two projects on 119 and 135, they are FDOT projects. Okay. Yeah. And they're on the planning horizons from FDOT. Okay. We get a copy every five, you know, of their plan every year, actually. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Through you to the manager, can you give us some sort of uh, report sometime soon about that? I have grave issues about the 119th Street overpass and what it will do not only to the residential areas, but it will decimate every commercial business, business along that corridor. Okay. Um, um, actually, I could reach out to FDOT and I'll get all the information on it and I'll present it probably. Or they, or they can come in and do a presentation. I'll, I will request a presentation yeah. from FDOT. Well, we might, might do it at like the the uh, homeowners association meeting as opposed to here. I, I mean, or both, I don't know, but okay. rather than think we're gonna have a room full of people from any one Understood. community, have it in their backyard as opposed right. to our convenience. So definitely I'll coordinate with district four and, and see if I could have it at Sunkist <coughs> Grove. It's just an idea. I'm sure. Just from my standpoint, no, no, it's, it's I've very been hearing important. that talked about for years and if that's really moving down the pike, I'd like to know more. Yeah, so it is moving. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought I had one more point, but I don't remember. The whole thing. Okay. Public hearing. Exactly. Public hearing is now open. Elevated. On this uh, item. Public hearing is now closed. Motion to approve with the one change. Oh, yeah. With the, yeah, with adding the MDX. Oh. Oh, you want, we did the MDX and we added and the shall consider. And the shall, shall consider. Shall consider. Yeah. Second. Yeah. Second. Council Vice Mayor Keys makes a motion to approve <coughs> policy number two titled transportation element with the two amendments stated on the record. It was seconded by um, Councilman Galvin. Councilman Desme, how do you vote? Yes. Mayor Joseph? Yes. Councilman Galvin? Yes. Vice Mayor Keys? Yes. And Councilman Bienname? Yes. Councilman Bienname? Yes. Item passes 5 0. No. We are now down to element number one future land use. Okay. And <laughs> so, um, here's, here's what I propose we do, Mayor and members of the Council, if you find it appropriate. Um, we have any number of goals, objectives, and policies that are new in this element. Um, as a result of the joint workshop, there were recommendations for density and/or intensity increases and height increases on some major corridors. Um, and some of those recommendations are reflected in the text. So I would propose that we go through, and you have the two charts that I provided you, start with the heights uh, and densities on the major corridors existing and proposed. As we go through that, the Planning Commission made some recommendations after the joint workshop. Those are not reflected in the plan you are considering, mm -hmm. but in deference, of course, to the Planning Commission, I want to tell you what they recommended for your consideration as we go through and I would once we have established if there is a consensus on height and densities on these corridors then move through the element for the goals objectives and policies that we have included if you find that appropriate 
That sounds fantastic to me. Okay, great. Thank you, Mayor. So if I can ask you to... Um, Uh, find the chart you have for the heights on major corridors proposed and existing and we're going to start with the top of the list so on Northwest 7th Avenue right now it doesn't have a density maximum okay because it's commercial it's right now it's slated for commercial and office at 55 feet what we learned from the joint workshop was that it should remain commercial and office but it should also add in mixed use. Mixed use would have a residential component. To address that, it would be a maximum density <coughs> of 25 units to the acre. So that is what is proposed on uh, 7th Avenue, 25 units to the acre, mixed use, with a, height of a maximum height of 300 feet. And at the pl subsequent planning commission meeting, the planning commission made a motion asking that the uh, city council consider, you locate it here, um, a height of sorry, a maximum height of 300 feet on the east side of 7th Avenue between 119th and 135th, but to keep a maximum height of 55 feet on the west side of said corridor. I'm going to briefly reiterate what I said at the beginning of this meeting. There's not a correlation between height and density. You have a very suburban density with a very urban height, um, and I don't know how this height lays out on these parcels. But that is the recommendation before you. Mr. Mayor, I, have a yeah. I just have a, go general, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. a general question. You've said it several times. An urban height with a suburban density. Is that a fancy way for saying these two don't go together? So I'm saying the correlation is not there. So what would be, if you had 300 feet height, what would your n normal density. density be? For I commercial I or residential? Um, commercial. Both. Both. Because, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. 100 to 300 for, you know, rough ballpark. I would have to do an analysis of that. But I don't, it, listen, the density you're proposing, the density that's being suggested here at 25 units to the acre is a townhouse development. So the, uh, the concept, here's what I see. Everyone's looked around. They see all the surrounding communities. They have redevelopment. And why? Well, they've got height, they've got density. Maybe if we had height and we had density, we too could enjoy some of this redevelopment. So a height has been picked at 300 feet. Why? That was the height that was suggested. I do not know why. Okay, did, your, did your organization ever once come for, for all the public hearings and the mysterious public people just moved? Did you guys ever have like an independent analysis of what we could do? We did that in 2007. But not more recently. That is correct. It's not, well, that was not part of our scope. Okay. Oh. This process started off with a very narrow scope. It was to address changes in state statute to, to meet the, more or less, the minimum requirements of a comprehensive plan update. It was narrow in focus um, to do that. We added a climate element and updated the economic development element. But basically, it was to assess the changes in state statute and to update it there. The thought process being that we went through and did a lot of very thoughtful and detailed analysis in 2007 when we increased density and intensity on the corridors and looked at how the density and intensity on the corridors would lay out on these parcels given the parcel size and the parcel configuration and all this stuff I've mentioned before. That plan was a good plan. The economy tanked. So this time that the thought process was, as I understand it, was not to go back and redo that no one has built, no one has used up the 5,000 bonus units. We had a good plan. The economy is recovering. And so it was to do the more narrow focus. So simplify this for us tonight. Please, yes. What would you recommend be, if we went to 300 feet on North Northwest 7th Avenue, commercial office and mixed use, what would a realistic uh, density be? I would need to go back and revisit that, but I'm going to even go back a step before that. And I would not recommend 300 feet of residential on 7th Avenue. Well, uh, um, okay. Can I say something, Councilman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, defer I, to you. I attended one of the meetings. I, I, I did talk to staff. I said I did not want any residential on the east portion of 7th and 95. We wanted that to be commercial um, and office space. Right. Okay. But it's, it's mixed use. 